Excellent. All right. So without further ado, I'm looking forward to introduce Jill Clark, um, who is the Events Coordinator for the Military Family Resource Centre Halifax and Region. Over to you, Jill. Thank you, Margaret. And a special welcome to everybody for taking the time to join us today. As Margaret said, uh, my name is Jill Clark. I work at the Halifax and Region Military Family Resource Center, and it's my great honor today to introduce you to two difference makers in our community. Um, first, I'd like to introduce Eleanor Clark. Eleanor grew up in Enfield. She joined the Canadian Armed Forces as a supply technician back in 1979. She returned to Nova Scotia in 2009 for a final posting to CFB Halifax before retiring to the Eastern Shore in 2012. In that time, she's married. Uh, she has two children while maintaining a commitment to community service that developed at a young age, and she continues to do so to this day. Her sister, Christine McCaskill. Christine is a licensed teacher. She's a lifelong community volunteer dedicated to the Legion's educational remembrance team since 1984. She's represented Nova Scotia in 1992 on their pilgrimage of remembrance. Since this educational experience, Christine has diligently committed herself to veterans, their families, and especially to fallen comrades by gathering their stories and sharing their sacrifices with our youth and provincial community groups. So it's my absolute pleasure to turn the microphone over to our presenting team today. Thank you both so very much for attending. Uh, good day all, this is Eleanor speaking. Uh, I will be leading most of the presentation. Christine will be following through on the chat and jumping in and uh, contributing as we uh, do when we're giving these presentations in person in schools and with community groups. We're both very grateful to be here today to speak on a very important subject of remembrance. Uh, with speaking to military families, we uh, know that you are immersed in the culture and you're certainly aware of the significance of this difficult uh, subject. We hope that uh, all of you here today will find something new and are compelled to find ways to build on what we are talking about to uh, keep alive the achievements and the sacrifices made by those that serve Canada in uniform. Poppies pictured here grow wild in uh, Europe on many of the battlefields of the First World War were fought there. And I can't think of a better uh, symbol, on, symbol of remembrance to, uh, to honor the sacrifices. And you'll see the poppies throughout the uh, presentation here for that reason. Our father, Alex McGee, was a veteran of World War II. He's pictured here in Belgium. And Christine was very fortunate to work with Dad in going into the schools and speaking about remembrance. Um, as it said in her bio that she's been involved in this for a long time. And when I came back to Nova Scotia in 2009, she recruited me to come in and help out. So in today's presentation, it'll be presented through five uh, questions. Who, what, when, where, and why? Of course, there's many different answers to uh, these questions. None are right, none are wrong. And uh, they'll mean different things to different people, for sure. So who also gave the ultimate sacrifice? We also remember veterans and those that continue to serve the Canadian military, RCMP, with unlimited liability. I'll talk about that term a little bit later. What? We remember the sacrifices, when specifically Remembrance Day, but also on many occasions throughout the year, where the Senate house across the country or anywhere, and why, lest we forget. So who in particular, like I say, we're uh, honoring those that made the ultimate sacrifice here in Canada. We have seven books of mem of uh, remembrance to commemorate those who laid down their lives in service to Canada. You can see them listed here. I think it's important to highlight the Merchant Navy because they, for a long time, weren't recognized as veterans. The term veteran over the years has kind of, uh, has definitely changed in society. I had a struggle with myself to uh, recognize myself as a veteran. 
uh, because we always seen it as the first and the second world war. Even those that uh, served in the Korean War, it took many years before they were recognized as veterans alongside those that came before them. Who will we remember? Well, certainly we'll be remembering these six individuals who lost their lives when the Cormorant off the HMSC Fredericton went down in the Mediterranean this year. Who do we remember? We remember the Royal Canadian Mounted Police on the honor roll. For example, Master Constable Heidi Stevenson, who lost her life here in Nova Scotia in the line of duty. Who do we remember? We remember Captain Casey, who also lost her life this year when the uh, snowbird she was in went down. On the bird. Who do we remember? We remember uh, Corporal Choi, just lost his life last weekend in a live fire uh, exercise in Wainwright, Alberta. Who do we remember? We certainly remember the great sacrifice in the monumental time in Canadians' history at Jimmy Ridge. France was so grateful for Canada's contribution there that they actually designated a piece of France as Canadian perpetuity. Two pylons there that you see represent Canada and France, the common goal of peace and freedom. When we talk to children about this difficult subject, we try to impart on them the idea is that we all play a part even in a peaceful society. We don't want to repeat war after war. We all have to work to make sure that those sacrifices are not forgotten. On the ramparts of the uh, monument, there's over 11,000 Canadian soldiers' names who have no known grave. One of the individuals who was killed on the, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself there. Uh, on the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Jimmy Ridge, the Prime Minister led a delegation to commemorate those that lost their lives in that battle. At that time, they placed a pair of boots for each soldier that lost his life on 9th of April, 1917. It was certainly a stark visual to see just how many one day lost their lives there. One of the individuals that died on that day was Peter Maloney, who was from nearby Shubenacadie, Nova Scotia here. One of the things that Christine uh, and I like to emphasize when we're talking to the children is these men weren't from faraway places or from our communities, and in lots of cases, our families. Who do we remember? We remember all those sailors that have no known grave and are remembered at this Halifax Memorial, often called the Sailors Memorial in Point Pleasant Park. It commemorates more than 3,200 that lost their lives. Who do we remember? We remember these individuals pictured here. That's our mother pictured with her friend, Murray Wilson. And Murray and his uh, friend, Andrew McDowell, who were enjoying a day out on the lake, just a few short years, both of them would be gone in the Battle of the Atlantic from the Second World War. I moved to uh, the Eastern Shore here, and uh, I got to know some of the people. One of the individuals I got to know was Tashma Mason's sister. And as I got to know his story, I found out that he actually was on the same ship, the HMC Alleyfield, that my mom's uh, friend, Murray Wilson, uh, was on on that fateful day on May 7th. Who do we remember? We remember not only those that made that ultimate sacrifice, but the other sacrifices that were made in the name of freedom. For example, Curly Christensen, who was here, was in the Battle of Vimy Ridge, and eventually he would have all of his limbs amputated as a result of wounds received on that day. Curley was uh, an advocate for veterans, and he continued to fight until he died. And as you can see from the picture, Curley was a black man, and it's worth mentioning that at that time, black people did not same as the Indigenous soldiers did not get the same services when they returned to Canada, which is very unfortunate. Who do we remember? We remember the prisoners of war, like those that are pictured above, who lived with physical and mental scars when they returned from 
um, for service. You can see in this picture just how emancipated some of their bodies were. Many of them didn't live full lives as a result of the wounds that they carried when they returned. Who do we remember? We remember those that are here today at this time, like Nidra Kuzano and Cody Middick, who both suffer from uh, uh, wounds that they received in service. Medrick was uh, has post-traumatic stress disorder as a result of a search and rescue mission, and uh, Jody Middick lost, lost both of his uh, uh, lower legs in Afghanistan. Who do we remember? We remember those soldiers of suicide. Many different sources will give different numbers and to how many people have actually taken their own lives as a result of the trauma that they sustained in service. And this tree here is at the Beechwood Cemetery in Ottawa. And it doesn't matter how many the number is, to me, one who takes their life is one too many. Who do we remember? We remember the peacekeepers. We remember that uh, more than 130 uh, lost their lives serving Canada. National Peacekeepers Day is the 9th of August each year, and it was selected for that for the reason that six peacekeepers lost their lives in uh, an airplane that was taken down in the Middle East. Mark Isfell picture here was uh, killed while removing landmines in Croatia. And when he went on pe previous peacekeeping missions, his mother would get this doll, the Izzy doll, that he could share with children when he went. And after his death, his family and friends kept up that tradition. Unfortunately, due to some of the uh, areas where our soldiers have to go, you can't always interact with the population. So they're maybe not as popular as they once used to be, but they are still very much used. Who do we remember? We remember people like Edward Hall, William Hall, uh, sorry, who was the first black person in the first Nova Scotia to win the Victoria Cross. The Victoria Cross is the most prestigious award of the British honor system. And William's uh, Victoria Cross is actually at the Black Cultural Center here in Nova Scotia. As I mentioned earlier, uh, a lot of uh, the veterans, uh, Black and Indigenous had to fight to serve country, and they had to fight for benefits when they came back. So I think it's very important to remember their sacrifices. I could probably go on for the full hour on who we remember. For each one of you, that, that who will be certainly uh, special in uh, maybe your family or in your community. And None of us can remember all of the sacrifices that were made, but we can each do our part so that we truly will remember them. Earlier I spoke um, about- Excuse, uh, excuse me. Um, yeah? Can I just interrupt for one minute, Eleanor? Sure. Um, or is it possible for people to write in the chat, perhaps, who do you remember? Um, we'd like to know, who do you remember? Thank you. Earlier, I spoke about that term unlimited liability. Uh, it's probably something that the military families are well aware of. If not that term, they certainly understand the concept. Pictured here is the HMSC Fredericton. After the cormorant went down in the Mediterranean Sea, I heard a lot of people wonder why the Fredericton didn't return to Canada, because I'm sure all the people on board were grieving as we were grieving the loss of those lives. Unlimited liability underpins the precept, the mission comes first, troops are second, and self is last. That's why people like our father, who went in on the beaches of Normandy, even though he could see the people before him were being shot and killed, he didn't hesitate to continue. He knew that that was the mission that day, and that's what needed to be done. So what are we talking about in Remembers? We're talking about the sacrifices. As I said, particularly those that made the ultimate sacrifice, remembering the sacrifice of the families and friends that grieved their loss. 
when you remember the sacrifices made by those who have served and that currently serve, when we remember the sacrifices that the families that support them make. We remember these sacrifices in our thoughts and our words and in our actions so that we will remember them. They said the poppy is uh, become known as a symbol of remembrance. And when we're talking to the children in the schools, of course, it depends on what age level you're talking to. So at the very youngest age, when we talk about the poppy, we start with what is a symbol. And then once they understand what a symbol is, that they can understand that the poppy is showing gratitude and respect and remembering those sacrifices. And what are those sacrifices for? They're for the freedoms we enjoy. A. And it's so important to emphasize that freedom is never free. Somebody is out there today standing on guard for us. You can see the sacrifice in that uh, older veteran's face, the sadness as he remembers the sacrifice of his comrades that never came back. You can certainly see the anguish in the younger soldier's face underneath there as they're carrying their comrade onto the plane for his final journey back to Canada. And you can certainly see it in uh, the young boy there who is Marcus Cirillo, his father, Nathan Cirillo, was shot as he stood on guard at the National War Memorial in Ottawa. I'm sure that Marcus at that point didn't really fully understand the sacrifice his father had made and that the sacrifices he would be making in going without a father going forward in life. So what are those freedoms that we talk about? Well, we have the freedom to study. We have the freedom to pray or not to pray. We have the freedom to read which books we choose to read. And we have the freedom to play in safe environments here in Canada. What we remember, the sacrifices like these families who are saying goodbye to their departments or Loved ones depart on the HMSC Toronto, replace that uh, HMCS Fredericton on its mission. And I'm sure on their minds is the sacrifice of those souls that were lost on the previous mission. What do we remember? We remember the sacrifices at, when we uh, welcome our loved ones home. Although they've been gone for a long time and we love to see them, Speaking from someone who has been that person to come home after a mission, it's not always easy to reintegrate in with the family. And the same with uh, those loved ones who are welcoming someone home. It takes a bit of sacrifice and re, re uh, doing your schedule to fit them back into the family fold. What do we remember? Remember the sacrifices like these two gentlemen here, uh, Rock, who is on the uh, left, who stepped on a landmine, lost one leg and had the other leg mangled. We remember the sacrifices like Trevor Green, who was hit in the head with an ax in Afghanistan and has had many years to come back to the point that he is now. What do we remember? We remember not only the physical uh, injuries, but those mental injuries. This picture here is one I share quite often with the students because it's a very good visual of what post-traumatic stress injury is all about. Kevin Barry, the veteran here, shared this picture and he asked if you could see what the danger was that he was seeing. And what's highlighted there is actually the top of the importance cup. But when Kevin was looking at it, he was seeing an IED as going back in time to when he was seeing that danger all around him in Afghanistan. Just a, an idea of vote, how long PTSD can continue to uh, roll out in our lives. In 1986, I was at the uh, Expo 86 with my uh, father and uh, some other family, and 
He started to react to the firework. It wasn't until the next day we found out what was happening. He was actually having flashbacks to being under fire some 40 years earlier in World War II. So when do we remember? Well, we certainly remember any time and all the time in some cases. Special times during the year, just a few of them are the Battle of the Atlantic in the, the spring, uh, Victory Europe Day, May, Memorial Day in Newfoundland certainly is a time when many remember, the Battle of Britain in September. At this time of year, from the last Friday in October through to Remembrance Day when the Legion Poppy campaign begins, we're certainly uh, uh, spurred on to remember, as it says in the Ode to Remembrance, at the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Just like a lot of things this year, uh, due to COVID, the Battle of Atlantic was certainly scaled down. Traditionally here in Halifax, it's commemorated at that Sailors Memorial in Point Pleasant Park. EE Day this year, the 75th anniversary. These uh, four Legionnaires took the time to do it safely and to honor those that lost their lives in the Battle of the Atlantic down in Wedgeport. As I mentioned in Newfoundland, the Memorial Day uh, is uh, commemorated on the 1st of July, as the anniversary of the Battle of Beaumont Hamill. Losses for the Newfoundland Regiment were so staggering, it changed the society. And as it says there, on the 800 who answered the battle call that morning, next day only 68 were able to answer the roll call the next day. More than 700 killed, wounded, or missing. I knew my husband had a, a great uncle who had served at Beaumont Hamill. It was only in uh, the last probably six, seven years that I realized that he actually died as a result of his wounds that su sustained that day in the battle. And it's only in the last couple years through a family member who's done a lot of ancestry work, we found out that there was another great uncle who actually died that day in Beaumont Hamill. When do we remember? Certainly the Battle of Britain, the 80th anniversary this year, again scaled down due to COVID. When do we remember, as I said, during that uh, the Papia campaign that the Legion has very uh, diligently kept up each year? And it's important to stress, as we do each time we speak to the children, that poppies are not sold. They are distributed. So if you don't have the money to make a donation, you're still encouraged to take the poppy and to wear it because that is what we want to see is the symbol of remembrance out there across the country. Now, there is a new black center that can be purchased for the poppy so that that stick pin can be taken out and it can be secured more uh, readily onto your clothing. We encourage on Remembrance Day that that can be taken out and the stick pump in back into the poppy so that it can be left at the cenotaph. When do we remember? Well, we certainly remember when we gather with military families as we have in this picture here at the school where the military members share their experience in uniform. But we also hear from the dependents tell of the sacrifices they make as part of a military family. Our birthdays are missed without their parents and sometimes Christmas and other holidays where they would love to have their parents with them. But that's part of the sacrifice of service. Here in Nova Scotia, we are very fortunate that the government has legislated the Act of Remembrance Day or the Remembrance Day Act. When we go into the schools, we stress there's no school on Remembrance Day, not because it's a holiday, because it's a time that's specifically set aside for the observation of Remembrance Day. That's how important this government feels 
both the fact that we remember those sacrifices that have been made. Each Remembrance Day, of course, at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, we pause for two minutes of silence. Reflect on those that we are remembering and the sacrifices that they made. It's important to note that regardless of where you're serving and with the military, there will be some kind of observation of that 11th hour. Today in this presentation, as we finish up the presentation before we go into questions and answers, we will observe two minutes then. When do we remember? Will we remember when we see people like Grace here, Captain Casey being repatriated back to Nova Scotia? People are gathering on the side of the road to show their respect and their gratitude for the sacrifice. Sony in recent years uh, really uh, solidified with Afghanistan that we started having repatriation of our soldiers. When they passed away. And not only allowing, but encouraging the population to come out and show their support. So where do we remember? We remember anywhere and everywhere. We remember at the National War Memorial, which has been come to be known as the National Cenotaph. We remember at cenotaphs across the country, and we remember wherever you find yourself, the 11th hour, the 11th the 11th month as we pause for two minutes of silence. The National War Memorial was unveiled in 1939 to commemorate the response of Canadians to the First World War. I'm sure you'll recognize that date, 1939, as being the start of the Second World War. So even though the First World War was called the War to End All Wars, we know that that's not case, and the memorial here is topped with two winged figures, which symbolize peace and freedom. And that's why I think it's so important that we continue to talk about these sacrifices, because we have so much more work to do to live in a truly peaceful society. Where do we remember? We remember certainly at, when we're at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, which is at the base of that war memorial. And the, the uh, person that uh, lays in the, underneath that tomb is unknown. It was someone who died in the area of the Fimi Ridge. And even though we had the technology at the time to identify him, it was a conscious choice to leave him as an unknown soldier so that he truly represented all of those who made the ultimate sacrifice for Canada. You can see from this picture of the uh, National uh, Cenotaph last year that there were huge crowds. And it's going to be different this year because for years we've been encouraging people to come out to the Cenotaph. Of course, because of COVID this year, we're going to have to find different ways to remember those sacrifices. Where do we remember? Well, certainly when we see the Peace Tower at the, mid in the center of the Parliament Hill, a peace tower was named dedication of all those who died in the Great War. In the memorial chamber, which is uh, in the peace tower, that's where those books of remembrance are held. Where do we remember at the cenotaph? And this is picture from the uh, Grand Parade cenotaph in Halifax last year. And as I said, after the the uh, service is over, we're generally asked to take the poppy off of our holding, put it back, put it onto a wreath. And in some places they have crosses for you to put on. This year, maybe we won't be doing it directly after a service, but hopefully we'll make our way to a cenotaph at some point, leave our poppies behind. Where do we remember? Every year, I'm sure this year will be no different. It may be scaled back, but people will gather at that Sailors Memorial in Point Pleasant Park to remember the sacrifices. People will gather just about anywhere, but certainly at places like this park that was named after Petty Officer Blake, who was the only sailor who died in Afghanistan. 
Where do we remember? We remember when we see people wearing the memorial cross, the memorial ribbon. This gentleman here, here has it on his uh, shoulder there. Memorial Cross is given out to families who have had someone who's lost their life in service to Canada. And originally it was just given to the mother. So there's where you get the Silver Cross mother from. Now it gives you up to five additional ribbons to other family members so that they can show that visible uh, sign of the lost head door. This year, the Royal Canadian Legion has uh, named as the National Silver Cross Mother Debbie Sullivan, who lost her son, Lieutenant Saunders, when he went down, or sorry, when he was uh, fatally uh, wounded in the submarine uh, coming home to Canada. And why do we remember? Well, lest we forget so that their name liveth forevermore, so that we truly, we will remember them. When we talk to the children, we talk about what that term hero means. And it's important, this poster here to me says it all, a hero faces death for others with no thought of personal gain or glory. This is the face of a true hero, not a sports star or an entertainer of some sort. This is why we're doing these briefings, presentations, is so that we do not forget, so that their sacrifices be not in vain. Christine and I have done a lot of presentations through the East Hans Corridor. And these two uh, pictures come from schools in that area. I think it's so meaningful to me to hear the message that we're trying to get across, that we all pay, play a part in uh, creating a peaceful society, echoed in schools. When the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. The second one, peace begins with me. It's only natural that we're not always going to agree on things. We have disagreements, but how we handle those disagreements is what's important. Oh, sorry, went too fast. <laughs> After the First World War, uh, the Commonwealth War Graves Commission was founded. And those crosses that John McCrae wrote about in Flanders Fields, all of those were replaced with headstones that are all the same, regardless of the rank of the individual who made uh, the ultimate sacrifice. In each of the Commonwealth War graves, war cemeteries, are common features. There's the cross of sacrifice, which you see at the back of the uh, cemetery there, and there's the stone of remembrance. And on the stone of remembrance, it has curved. Their name liveth forevermore. That's exactly why we're here today speaking about this, so that we do not forget the sacrifices. There's no way that any one of us can remember all of those who made the sacrifice. Each one of us can do our part, remember those in our families and in our communities and those that have touched us in some way, so that truly we will remember them. Christine, you're gonna... I have two minutes of silence. I know how to unmute myself. And then I had to try to find out how do you get control of that feeling that it's not a story anymore. These are, as Elmer said, these are men and women that have done what they've done for each of us. And I just think that you, Elmer, you did an amazing job. And, and each one of those stones it's not accidental that our government decided they all would be marked the same way. 
the supreme sacrifice. I ask you if it is possible for you to please stand. And if it's not possible, we just pause. I think reverently of these young men and women. And we'll have a two minutes of silence. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. If anyone has any questions for us, we'll try to answer them. Eleanor, you did a great job, and I know that this... There is one question. <laughs> Who gets to guard the tomb of the unknown, unnamed soldier? How does that work? I'll speak to that a little bit. There's actually a sentry uh, duty where uh, uh, people who are recognized as... Uh, serving are given that opportunity to go. It's typically only done uh, during the, uh, from the spring to the early fall. And uh, they have people who are chosen, like I said, on merit to go and to uh, take on that duty. What does it mean when there's quarters on the, on the tombstones? I think that that's people. I think that's people just moved by some sort of gesture. It's probably a coin that has been in their pocket. They've maybe been carrying for the poppy campaign that has something about remembrance. That would be my guess, an educated guess only. Questions from the from the people who have joined today. Debbie, Bella, Jason, Jerry, Judy, Michelle, Sherry Ann. Wow. I just want to thank you so, so very much, Eleanor and Christine. Um, the picture with all of the uh, tombstones really touched me. And to, to remember the who, what, where, when, and why we remember is so important and you captured it beautifully in this presentation um, I'm just so thankful to have had the opportunity to be here with you and I'm thankful for Christine for all of your comments in the chat it was absolutely beautiful and I'm, I'm hope I'm looking forward to sharing this with as many people as we can because we must remember Jill over to you Great, and thank you very, very much, Eleanor and Christine, for organizing this session for all of us with COVID-19. I know lots of people won't be able to get out to remember, 
And I think that this was a very special way to, to do that and, and to bring that forward. Um, you spoke so eloquently about sacrifice and freedom is never free, uh, especially for those that are standing on guard for us. Um, today, we're also remembering people, not just in World War I, World War II, and the Korean War, but military families, sacrifices, um, so many people, um, and in particular, the Military Family Resource Center, where we have some families currently right now that are experiencing those sacrifices as family members, and you spoke about that, Eleanor and Christine. So um, thank you so very much for all of the educational pieces and carrying this message forward for all of us and, and educating us and all the work you do in your communities as volunteers. Thank you both so much. Most welcome. Thank you so much. It's a beautiful presentation. It really is. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Uh, I appreciate that. When our committee sat down and tried to sum up and uh, how things had gone, what was successful, I think that really now after, at my age, uh, I uh, recognized why my our father uh, wanted us to get involved with the Legion. And just one of the really good things that maybe came out of this COVID, like last year, and I said, I'm not sure how many more years I can go for 10 days straight physically. And it takes, and emotionally, it takes a lot out of you. The more you know, the more you feel it. And, um, but just this idea of sharing as you're doing, maybe there'll be other people that will see this and they would like to be part of the presenting. And you can, we have grown in our team of how we can personalize it to uh, the age level that we are talking to, like Elmer, you presented really well, but as you were saying, you gave comments there, and I tried to do it in the chat room too, is how we take take that down to the level, whether it's at grade primary to six, or whether it's uh, studying with the only place in Nova Scotia where our, our young people are studying Canadian histories in grade eight, so we try really hard at that time to, to maybe do some presentations and help them to see the personal side of it. And then again, there's an optional course at uh, grade uh, 10, 11, or 12 in Canadian history. And again, there, we've had some great presentations uh, received and uh, by teachers who are interested in helping the kids see that part of it, that we all have a connection to this. Sometimes I say to the older kids there, it just kind of feels like we're putting together a puzzle. But every one of us has a piece in that, in that, those um, veterans that found it so hard, as our father did, and I know that there's somebody else on the line too that I'm sure your father did as well, um, that to be able to come back and go return to normal life, they were, total, they, were, they were changed. But in the mid 80s, I think they began to see that we had to know a little bit about that horrible stuff but we wouldn't know how important it is. And it was hard at first to join the boys club, because it was mostly boys, but there was there Mary Sullivan, she was a great veteran that taught me a lot. But they saw something in me that I didn't know was there, mm. that having that, maybe that teacher uh, training to help them to take it down to the when we were going into the schools and they would want, the kids would ask questions and they would give, some of the veterans could articulate very well, great details. And then, but just to gently help them to see that maybe that was too much information for a grade two student. But a great place to help them to get an invitation into a grade eight or, or a 12 class. And uh, so I've learned so much, I feel like, a, I've been gifted with trying to figure out some way to keep it going forward though, when it's, it's not just dependent on one person, but this slide presentation that you allowed us to be with, and hopefully there'll be some of those people that will listen to that and see, I could do that probably. And uh, we could add you to our team or wherever you're at, that uh, there is, a place for all of us to, to do something. We won't all do the same thing, but we'll all do something. Thank you. 
Thank you. And and Jason, um, did you want to share, Jason, or would you like me to read your your point in the chat? If we have your voice or not, Jason. Jason says, uh, thank you for the profound presentation. My dad would be so proud that we take this opportunity to educate our own son and daughter on this message, to remember what their grandfather and all those heroes have done for us. And Judy was saying, you know, thank you, Eleanor, for sharing that. As Christine has just said, the more you know as we age, how we become emotional uh, knowing. Very, very incredible presentation. If you want to help with presentations as well, I put Jill Clark's uh, email address and please reach out to her and she would be happy to connect you to Eleanor and to um, uh Christine to to be able to uh, be part of sharing the word of remembrance. Thank you so much for coming tonight. We will be sending out an after session email with a with a uh, evaluation, and we're just Eleanor and Christine. We're just so thankful for this beautiful beautiful remembrance presentation. You're most welcome.